Welcome, everybody. Today's video is called, Why Does God Only Reveal Two Angels' Names in the Bible? Hallelujah. Well, I'd just like to thank God, and I hope uh, that you've had a blessed day today, and you felt in your life uh, the healing power of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and I pray that you'll be able to understand this um, video. And please just be patient and try and listen to all of it because it's important to have all the pieces of the jigsaw. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. Because like Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, that it's not the abundance of revelations, uh, amen, that really count. Uh, Apostle Paul says, uh, For when I am weak, I will therefore glory in my infirmities uh, and my distresses for when I'm weak, then the power of Christ rests upon me. And that's my prayer for you, is that you feel, even if you don't understand this video, it doesn't matter, that you daily experience as part of the body of Christ, uh, amen, the power of the healing of the Lord Jesus may rest upon your life now as part of the body of Christ. Okay, so let's get back onto the topic. Why? Does God only reveal two angels' names inside of the Bible? All the angels' names he's kept secret except two of them. And if you go to um, Genesis 32, verse 29, you see Jacob is being wrestling with the angel. And uh, he's now been given the new name, which is Israel. So it's the coronation of uh, Jacob being called Israel or a momentous occasion and the angel of God who, who names him uh, that it's logical that after Jacob is named given a new name it's a natural response for Jacob to say well and what is your name to that the angel refuses uh, to give him his name and we see it repeat again um, and it judges chapter 13, verses 6, 16, and to 18 in Judges 13. Now, Samson's mom and dad have been told by the angel that God is going to give them Samson. And afterwards, uh, they ask uh, um, the angel what his name is. And of course, he says, you cannot be told my name because it's wonderful. So here we see it is a wonderful secret for God not to tell the angels' names. Uh, amen. So to be able to go into this revelation, you can see it's something that not even Israel, Jacob, would be told. Uh, and not even Samson's parents, who would be the strongest of all men, neither would be told. And remember, he's the one that gave up the secret uh, of his strength, which was his Hair to Delilah, which he shouldn't have. Okay, and here we find Angel not giving the secret of his name to Samson's parents, teaching Samson and his parents the lesson keep the secret. So, this area we're going to was something that God, amen, particularly paid attention to keeping secret, as we find in Isaiah 48, verse 6. God says, I will reveal to you hidden things that you have not been told or did not know. So you're going to find in this video a lot of things that may seem strange to you, but definitely things that you would not know. Right, let's go on to the two names. Can you guess what the two names of the angels are in the Bible? Remember, there's only two, not four. You've got people who's called Raphael, Uriel, uh, Michael, Gabriel, etc. and so forth. But in the Bible, God only gave us two names. And God specifically only wanted us to have two names. So where the other names come from, I don't know. But with the Bible, God absolutely did not want any names except two to be mentioned. So what book do you think uh, 
the two names I mentioned. It's only one book. God kept it secret from every prophet except one. Can you guess? Can you guess? Ten seconds. You can pause the video and think about it and come back because I'm going to give you the answer now, okay? It is the prophet whereby it was said, no secret thing is withheld from thee, Daniel. A prophet Daniel is told that the only prophet, the names of these two angels, you'll find it in Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 9, and uh, where he's introduced to the angel Gabriel, and then chapter 10, he's introduced to the angel Michael, and then chapter 12, again introduced to the um, angel Michael again. So Daniel, only him. So you can see, like I was telling you, it is something very secret. So what we're talking about now is something that has been hidden from the foundation of the world because it is something very precious and exciting to God. Like Isaiah 45 verse 3, and I will reveal to you the secret treasures of darkness that only Daniel um, was uh, told. And when we look at chapter 8 of Daniel right through to chapter 10, <clears throat> you find the angel Gabriel, especially in chapter 10, begins to talk and say that except Michael came to help me, only Michael was there to help me. Now that seems very strange. I want you to remember this. There's thousands upon millions of angels. I mean, tens of thousands and tens of thousands times tens of thousands. Why would only Michael be there to help Gabriel? Remember that it does not make sense. In chapter 10 of Daniel, Gabriel is saying he's fighting against the kings of Greece. And um, but only Michael is there to help him. It doesn't make sense because there's absolutely millions of angels. So we're being led into the mystery of the secret. If you could hold on and remember that. So that's the first and only book that tells us the angels' names. Right. There's actually two angel books in the Bible. Only two. Meaning that where angels come and spend a long time giving the message of God. The first one you saw was Daniel, and it's Daniel from chapters uh, eight, 8 and onwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but there's one other book. And the reason for that being two books, because God says in, in Exodus to Israel, remember he built the ark, and on the ark he put the two cherubims. Now, the two cherubims were faced like this. You couldn't see their faces because they're kept hidden. And now remember that. There's a reason for that. Because God is keeping the identity of them from you. Why would God do that? Because we can't see the angels. Or is there a mystery there? So the angels are hidden. But they're touching each other. Okay? Because they're made from the same piece of gold. Out of the one piece of gold. The two cherubims were beaten. And they're touching. God said to Israel. Whenever I talk to you. I will come down and stand between the two cherubim on top of the ark. And I will talk to Israel through the middle of the two cherubim. It's called the meeting place of God. So watch this. Inside of the whole of the Bible, God repeats what he did in the tabernacle out of the um, <clears throat> 66 books. There's only two books which major in huge messages given by angels. Yes, you have other books when angels come and say the odd sentence, but I'm talking about chapters where angels have the preeminence. And only two books. Why? Because God said he would speak between the two cherubims, which means in the Bible, there must be two books that, that major in angels giving the messages uh, because God inside of the whole of the Bible is talking between the two Cherubim, so there could only be um, two books, right? Praise be to God. Now, why does God 
do that. Now, so here's the two books. The first book is Daniel, and the other book is Zechariah. Now remember in the ark, the cherubim's touch, the wings touch, made from the same piece of gold. So it means when we look at the two books, which is Daniel and uh, Zechariah, they must touch together, meaning they have the same meaning. So we have the first book, Daniel, the last chapters reveal to us the two names, which have been kept secret of the two angels. But the book of Zechariah points towards the two witnesses that are to come. In Daniel chapter, sorry, Zechariah 4, the, the angels say to Zechariah, who are these two olive trees? And Zechariah just does not know. And the angel says, dude, don't you know who these two are? <clears throat> like he should know. Now remember, the two books that touch, because Daniel, the book of Daniel touched the book of Zechariah, ready, bang! That is showing us who these two olive trees are, because they must touch together. The book of Daniel reveals the two angels' names, and the book of Zechariah points to the two olive trees, which must mean it's Gabriel and Michael. Praise God. So, that doesn't seem to make sense. How could the two witnesses be Michael and Gabriel? Because they're angels. The two witnesses would be Elijah and Enoch. Why them? Because remember, both of them didn't die. So they both have to come back to die. Because the Bible said it's appointed unto man once to die in the judgment. Everybody is tasted of death. St. Paul, St. Peter, St. John, Moses, etc. But not them. So they have to come back. To taste of death once, like the Bible says. So how could Michael and Gabriel be the two olive trees, the two that stand before the God of the whole earth? Well, remember Jesus said this. John, remember, look up your scriptures. John chapter 13, chapter 3, verse 13. John 3, verse 13. Jesus says, no man ascends up to heaven except he came down from heaven. Remember that. No man ascends up to heaven, except, hallelujah, he came down. And remember, Jesus ascended because he came down. Now, go on to Elijah and Enoch. Both of them ascended. So if they ascended, it must mean they actually came from there. That's why Moses could not ascend because he didn't come from there. That's why St. Paul, St. John, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Elisha could not, Adam, ascend because they did not come down from there. Wow. There is no way Enoch and Elijah could have ascended. Like Jesus says, no man ascends except he actually came down from there. John 3 verses 13. So let's look now. And go a journey and see where we see that. In Genesis chapter 11, we see the first time Jesus, God, he's God there. Because Jesus would come down from heaven. He says, let us, remember um, Genesis 11 verse 7, look it up. Jesus says, let us go down. So there we see two individuals coming down. Even there with Jesus. A prophecy, the Holy Spirit is letting us know in secret that all the way from the beginning, that not only would Jesus descend from heaven and ascend, but also two others would. That repeats itself again in Genesis 18, amen, where the two angels again come down to see Abraham and to begin to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. God showing us... Uh, like it couldn't be, remember, Jericho was destroyed. God didn't need to bring angels to do that. God could just do it himself from heaven like he would do um, and, and rain and hailstones when Joshua um, um, was fighting and um, when the sun stood still. So God didn't need to come down with the two angels. God's showing all the way Back in Genesis, uh, amen, a prophecy that Jesus was going to come down and take upon himself the human form, amen, which he did 2,000 years ago, but he would also come down with uh, two 
others. And of course, if you notice in Genesis 19, Jesus did not go with the other two angels into Sodom. He separated. Why? Because again, that is a future prophecy that Jesus would not take upon himself a sinful nature because he cannot. He's conceived from the Holy Spirit because he's the only begotten Son of God. Like Hebrews 1 says, to which one of the angels did I say, you are my only begotten Son? None. Only Jesus could have that. So Michael and Gabriel, when they came down, when they eventually would come down and take upon themselves a human form, they would now take on the sinful nature, which would give them a lot of trouble, which is why when the two angels went to Sodom, all of the men of Sodom seek to try and rape them. Future prophecy to the two angels of the difficulty they would experience when they, like Jesus, would take upon themselves a human form. Praise be to God. And that's why, amen, they would both always, after they've lived their life like Elijah and Enoch, they had to go back up to where they came from. But all and everybody else have to remain down near. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, He that is from above is greater than they that are from beneath. Which is why the two witnesses in Revelations, after they die, again, like Elijah and Enoch did before, they've come back. And in Revelations 11, after they've been killed, they arise up from the dead in front of everybody and they again go back up to heaven in front of everybody. The only ascension that the whole world gets to witness and see kept separate from everybody else. Why? Because that's where they came from. All the way to Genesis 11, verse 7, it began when Jesus said, let us, not just me, whenever two or three are gathered in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everyone is established. So not only did Jesus take upon himself a human form, so did Michael and Gabriel in the form, Michael of Elijah and Gabriel as Enoch. And we see that present himself because remember when Jesus um, dies, he's crucified between two pointing to the two angels that would be also take upon themselves, amen, their human form. But the other two would have a sinful nature, but not Jesus. Jesus rises from the dead. And when John and, J and Peter run to the tomb, who's there? The two angels. Amen. When he's ascending to heaven in Acts 1 verse 10, who's there? The two angels all along. Let us go down, Michael and Gabriel, and Daniel chapter 10, is with Jesus all the way through. Why? Because these two, the only two angels that are given names that we would know, because they are the only two that would become man. That's why in the book of Daniel, every time Daniel's talking, he refers to them as the man Gabriel. When Jesus is seen inside of Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, he's referred to as the man. Why? Because the Spirit is revealing to them those three. The Word becomes a man. Michael and Gabriel become a man. And even inside of um, uh, Jesus going up to heaven, the disciple says, Who can sit on your left and who your right? Mark um, 10, verse 40, Jesus says, you do not know what you ask because to sit on my left and on my right is not mine to give. It is prepared of my father. It is Michael and Gabriel, the two that would always come down with Jesus. The two that are at the grave when he rises from the dead. The two that are there when he's ascending. The two that sits on his left, on his right in heaven. And in um, Zechariah 4, the two anointed ones that stand before the Lord of the whole earth. And the two uh, that come again, but this time to die in Revelations 11, in the skies of Elijah and Michael. Remember the angels whose faces, which is identity, was kept hidden. That even Jacob, when he asked 
God would not tell him. And when the parents of Samson asked, God would not tell them. Only one would be told, which was Daniel, which would join together the two only angel books to touch, which reveals the two witnesses, the olive trees, is in fact the two angels, Michael and Gabriel. Praise be to God, which is why they do things. It says in Revelation 11, it was given to them to smite the earth with as many plagues as often as they wished. Far different than Moses, which couldn't until God moved them. They're able to do it as often as they wish. Like they went down to bring judgment upon Sodom. Amen. Like the angel in 1 Chronicles 24 could destroy 70,000 just like that. It is not like unto man. Amen. They have come from above. Like Jesus says, no man ascends above except he came from there. Praise be to God. Which is why in Malachi chapter 3, we're told that it is Elijah that's coming. But then in Daniel chapter 12, it tells us verse 1, no, it's Michael, that great prince. He's the one that's coming, that's going to, amen, help Israel. But Malachi says, no, it's Elijah. Jesus says, no, it's Elijah. Revelation 11, no, it's Michael that drags and pulls Satan down. Both are one and the same person. Remember, I began at the beginning of the video showing you that in um, Daniel chapter 10, Gabriel was saying, only Michael could help me. It's showing you that Gabriel is showing us is that he's saying that when he's going to be in human form. He's saying only Michael will know what I'm going through and only Michael will be able to help me for he too shall now be in human form. And like the t their wings touch, they'll both help each other. Amen. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense because in heaven there's millions of angels that could help Gabriel. But it's the only two angels that actually take upon human form. Like Jesus says, Genesis 11 verse 7, let us go down, pointing in prophecy in a mystery to when they would take upon human form. And that's the two witnesses, Michael and Gabriel, Elijah and Enoch, helping each other as they wrestle with the sinful nature that they have as the men of Sodom gather around them to try to abuse them, prophesying the difficulties they would have in coping with their sinful nature. Amen. As they await the last three and a half years of their life, when then the prophecy of God begins, when they're ready and prepared, having dealt with the difficulties of the sinful nature, which the time of Sodom was actually prophesying. Praise be to God, an exciting mystery. Amen. So when you read the Bible, you can see how precious this book is. Because remember, God stood in the tabernacle and said to Israel, I will not talk to Israel except between the two cherubims. And so a wonderful holy Bible is written where there's only two books where angels major in it and talk. One is Daniel where the only names revealed of the two angels. Amen. Why? Because only two would take upon human form. And then the other Zechariah, which reveals who the two witnesses, and they touch. And God, in every other book in the Bible, it's always the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Malachi. Never the angels. Why? Because there must only be two angel books. Why? Because it's there that God will talk to the world between the two cherubim, showing you how beautiful and holy the Bible is. Now, I don't worry if you can't get it because these things can seem. Remember, Jesus says, there's many things I have to tell you, but you are not able to bear it. Many people, it is strong meat and not milk. Amen. Will not be able to endure. 
the depth of this meat, praise be to God. But anyway, those of you who have, I hope it's a blessing to you. And remember my name, Elijah Michaels. That should trigger off in your memory the meaning and the mystery between Michael and Elijah. If you just wait, um, I'm going to pause a minute. I promise my small one, um, he was upset that he couldn't be in one of the videos. So I'm now going to um, introduce you to Michael. Hold a minute. Praise God. Huh? This is Michael. I wanted to say hello because Mark last time. I'm say hello. Hello. Michael's different than Mark because he's very, very gentle. Very, very shy. How was school today? Um, I'm very good. Very good. And what did you do at school today? Um, um I was planning to play it and and hope he. I never mean. I mean, play with people. Oh, <coughs> you played with people. Wow. And what's that you're eating? Daddy's head. He's eating Daddy's head. Are you sure you're eating Daddy's head? Yeah. That looks like a jam donut. I want you to just, why the Holy Spirit has done this, imagine Michael the Archangel, how much God loves him. Michael is just like a little child. Imagine I'm God the Father, holding and caring for Michael. He imagine how it would be for Michael to leave the heavens like Jesus said, let us go down and to come and take on a sinful nature which actually would have, um, truly abuse them. Only the Father, that's why the Father said, and his name, Jesus, shall be called the everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, only the Father. Like Jesus said to the disciples, when they wanted the left seat and the right seat, they said, you know not what you ask. This thing is prepared of my father. Say goodbye, Michael. Say goodbye.